Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of My Bucket List Day. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Jeff. And uh, from time to time, we do reviews on products. So let me tell you about today's product. Uh, it's another e-bike from Velotrick. So this bike, they claim to be an outstanding adventure bike. They call it the Nomad One. And we're going to do a little video of the unboxing and we're going to do a little test ride with it. Take it for a spin and see how it stacks up against all the other bikes we've done reviews with. So they're claiming it's a very powerful and versatile fat tire bike. And uh, that it can do pretty much everything all the other bikes in its class can. Now this is only a class 2 bike, it's not a class 3. So for those of you that are in states that uh, don't allow the class 3 in a lot of the parks or bike paths and stuff, you're perfectly safe with this. And they, like many others, uh, say it's an all weather, all terrain type of bike. Um, and we're going to test out a few of those things too. And we're going to dive into all of the features and all of the bells and whistles on this thing a little later in the video once we get it out of the box. But first we're going to do that. And one of the things I was kind of impressed with when they reached out to me is they have some really cool colors. And you'll see one of them that I picked here for this, uh, this bike to review. I should first point out, they reached out to me and asked me if I'd do a review. And as all of you have watched me before for the last oh, a year or so, I don't do reviews on a lot of products. I basically want to test the product out, make sure it's good before I do a review. But in this case, they said, hey, we'd love to send you one. Can you do a full, honest review like you do on the others? So I said, okay, I'm game. Let's dig into it. Uh, I will say from the specs that I read and the little videos and the things that I've seen, pictures and images, I was pretty impressed with the bike. Otherwise, I would have said no. Um, full transparency, I probably get oh, two e-bike companies a month who reach out to me and say, hey, can you do a review? And most of the time, I turn them down. But this is one company I said, you know what, this product looks pretty darn good. Let's take a look at it. So let's get into it. All right, first things first, we need to open it up. Get the straps off. Well, it looks like it's packaged pretty well. And the color is incredible. Look at that yellow. They call it a tangerine, I believe. I'll double check that in a minute. But it's packed in here pretty well. Some assembly required, as you can see. So let's go ahead and start taking all of the packaging out and get it out of the box. So now, as you can see, this is packaged pretty darn well. And uh, the color is cool, isn't it? Awesome looking. So let's go ahead and finish unpacking it. And, well, I shouldn't say unpacking, just taking all the packing material off. And then we'll start the assembly. But you guys don't need to watch me unclip all of these zip ties and all that kind of stuff. So, so I'll be back as soon as I get everything all unwrapped. And we're back. So everything is all unpackaged. And as you can see, we've got the battery, a fender, a wheel, and a tool kit. Check out that color. The color's pretty bright. Pretty cool looking. Guys, got to leave a comment below. Tell me what you think of this color. We're going to get closer with it on the other camera. But now we have to put it together, which doesn't look too hard. It looks like we had to put on a couple pedals, the wheel, the fender, and the handlebars. But I can tell you right now, while the forks are in the correct position, the head is reversed. But I think I remember reading something that you have to turn this head around uh, before you can assemble the handlebars. So let's go ahead and get into the toolbox here and I'm sure we'll find all the screws as well as the tools we need to get this done. So the toolbox, let's get into that. Pop it open and we see it comes with a quick user guide. And it opens this way. So in here, we have the kickstand. 
And it looks like a little tool pouch, which we'll get into in a second. The charger. And the power cord for it. Looks like we've got the heads up display that we're going to mount on the handlebars. Some reflectors and some cables. Ah, here's the pedals. A pair of pedals. And a safety manual. And we got the front reflector and a rear light. The front headlight. Oh, and it came with a bell. That's kind of a cool thing. And here's the extra hardware we're going to need for everything. So I'll put that back in there. And there's everything that's in that toolkit. Let's start the assembly. So, we have to get the uh, head unit here turned around. So we're going to open up that little uh, tool pouch. And it looks like 4 millimeter, just by the looks of things. Let's try that. Pretty good eye, Jeff. So we're just going to loosen this up. There, that looks straight. With the forks. Tighten it back up. Okay. That part's done. Okay, now we're going to put the handlebars on the front yoke. So we'll just remove these screws. Okay, those are all off. Now we just swing the handlebars in place. Now, it may say this in the manual, but the best way to tighten these is to cross-tighten just like you would do a, uh, a wheel on your car. Okay, I think we got them all tight. Experience tells me that handlebars were the first thing to put on because we're going to turn the bike over and install the kickstand and the wheel, the front wheel. It makes it much easier than trying to lift it up while you're balancing the bike when you're by yourself and you don't have anybody to help you hold it. So let's turn the bike over so we can install the wheel and the kickstand. So as you see we got the bike turned over so we have this little spacer here we just need to pop off. We'll toss that in the box and there's another critical piece you'll see right here there's this little red stopper in here it's for the calipers, the brake calipers. You do not want to press the brakes before you get the wheel in place. It'll basically squeeze the calipers without the uh, disc being in there and mess up your brakes. So you want to make sure those aren't pressed when you're putting your wheel in. So we're going to take this out and do not touch those brake handles. And now let's get the wheel. Now when putting the wheel in, I always like to guide the disc in the brake calipers first and then you've got a washer yep, you gotta pull that, unthread that a little more Add enough on that side boom brake pads in there now it's got these little locks on here, I like this, so once you tighten it up 
if the bolts ever come loose it's not going to fall out unless the bolts completely come off so we'll just lock those in finger tight right now we do have a little dragging in the disc but we can adjust that and we'll do that too yep the wheel is running straight so the caliber just needs a slight adjustment okay to adjust the calipers it's really simple all we're going to do is loosen the brake calipers here a little bit just the top one and the bottom one and all we're going to do spin the tire a little bit and lock and hold the caliper down now when you hold the caliper down you're just going to tighten it back up again hold the caliper down okay it's tight the caliper is adjusted Look at that, you don't hear a single rub. And that's how you adjust the brakes on the front wheel or any wheel on disc brakes. Now let's get the kickstand going. Okay, to do the kickstand, really simple. We'll just back these two screws right out of here. Done. And we'll just line them up there. And that's all there is to it. We'll just tighten it up now. And the kickstand goes up. And I notice it's got a little adjustment right here, which is kind of cool, but we won't know that till we flip it back over. But you can put a little Allen wrench on here and adjust the height and how you like it. Now, while it's tipped over, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the pedals. Okay, for any of you that have ever assembled a bike before, you know you have left and right pedals. So, the pedals do come marked, left or right, and the only reason there is that is the, the threading. Uh, on the left-hand side, it's kind of threaded backwards, if you will. Uh, so when you're cranking, you're not on threading it. I always recommend that you try to turn it on without a tool just so you can get the thread started and then you can get a tool on there and start turning it and then lock it down. That's done. Now let's do the right. There we go. Okay, I think it's ready to turn back over, put the kickstand down, and we'll finish assembling the handlebars. Everything goes on the handlebars. Okay. All right, now to put the display on the handlebars, it's pretty simple. We just spread those apart. And I put that right there. We have the little screws that came with it. And we'll get those started. Now I'm not going to tighten these all the way down because I'm probably going to do a few adjustments as I'm putting things on, getting cables lined up and things like that. So I recommend you guys do the same. So it's just snug, it's nothing's tightened up. But you get the idea. Now what's great is these are color coded. So the green, just line up the notch, goes with the green one. And then the blue of course, will go with the blue. So it appears Here's the light goes right there, which is the same bolt we use to mount the fender. So let's kill two birds with one stone and do it all at once. Put the 
fender up on it. And we'll slide the light on. Don't forget that washer. You gotta have that washer on the back here. Sorry, I can't get the camera in there to see that. But that's how you do it. Then we take the red plug and line it up. So to put the bottom part of the fender on, all you do is take these screws off and screw that in there and uh, do that on both sides and that's mounted. So that's simple. And as you can see, they put thread lock on the uh, screws so they won't back out, which I'm always appreciative of. There. Now I'll do the same on the other side. The electric also sent me this rack That'll basically go right here. I just got to remove those screws, put that on, and boom, we got a beautiful rack on the back. Let me go ahead and do that. All that's left is to put the battery in. Done. Okay, now we get the satisfaction of pulling off the label. Ooh, ah, brand new. So let's power it up. And look at that, we have a display. Now you can turn the assist up, all the way to five, and then turn it back down to zero. So as you see, we have zero miles, zero on the trip, and zero everything. Battery is about three quarters charged, that's enough to go for a little test ride. But before we do that, let's just kind of do a recap. All right, so this wasn't too hard to put together, but I do want to say if you're not comfortable with putting bikes together or very mechanically inclined, I would suggest you take it to a bike shop and they can assemble it for you. What they're going to charge, I'm not sure, but you know, maybe a 80 to 150 dollars or something like that. But don't quote me on that. Check with your local bike shop. Um, the bike, like I said, it looks pretty good. We're going to go for a test drive and check it out. But I will tell you, from putting it together, uh, it went together pretty well, with the exception of the bike rack, as I mentioned. Um, that was a aftermarket thing. I'm sure they had somebody else make it, so that's why it probably wasn't perfectly aligned. Everything else was. Um, it is truly an all-terrain bike. We'll see tested over uh, various terrains here. But a couple of things to point out that uh, I noticed while assembling it, it does... Uh, it does have plastic fenders rather than the metal fenders, which uh, I prefer metal, but that's to each its own. Some people like the plastic fenders. Overall, the weld on the bike is in pretty good welds on everything. You do see them all, so they're not blended or puttied over like some manufacturers do. Um, but the color, I gotta say, I like the color. Call me crazy, I think this little uh, tang tangerine or mango yellow, I think is pretty cool. So the Velatric Nomad 1, this is called, and uh, so far, pretty impressed. It does not have a color display, uh, like some other companies do. And uh, the components on there are, you know, this lower end to the uh, middle of the road. They're not the higher end components on it. But uh, for an entry level bike into this, uh, this category, I think it's really, really impressive. Um, now you'll notice this is a step through one rather than a step over one. So this is basically designed for people who are from 5'1 to 6'4. Um, unlike other companies where you can actually buy by the different size you are, you can buy a small, medium, or large. This is a one size fits all on the step through. If you get the step over, uh, that's a little higher. It goes from 5'6 to 5'9. So it's for taller people. Um, so I guess they're going in the category of uh, this is a female version versus a male of the step over where all the other manufacturers are doing just the opposite and saying it doesn't matter if you have a step over or step through they're all made for men or women uh, easier to get on and off and I will say if you're if you're elderly or if you have trouble swinging your leg up over the bike uh, a step through is very very nice um, I asked them to send me the step through rather than the step over um, because I think it's got a much larger appeal. Everybody I've been talking to said they really, really like the step through. 
Well, that's it at a high level. We're going to dive in deeper on some of the features uh, after we go through our ride. Okay, everybody. It's ready for the test ride, but you may notice change of clothes. Full transparency, yes, this is a different day. Um, I actually did record a, a test ride um, the day I assembled everything, which was a week ago. However, it didn't do it justice. I'm going to point out that the seat, I needed to slide back that little extra inch, and these handlebars I needed to tip up. The reason for that, even though this frame, they say is built for people from 5'1 to 6'4, um, as well, I'm 6'1 and I have a 33 inch inseam. Well, every time I took a turn and I was pedaling, my knee kept hitting the handlebars the way it was positioned when it was all lined up. So I had to basically push the handlebars forward a little bit, turn them up, and slide the seat back as far as I could um, to get on it. So now I can turn without hit my knees hitting the handlebars. Um, so for those of you that are 6'1 or taller, um, I would suggest you probably go to the step over bike because it is a little larger, a little, the space between here and here is larger. Um, I forget what they call that, but it's a, a gap in between there. And you're going to need that if you're turning. Now these are kind of a, uh, a cruiser type handlebar rather than like a mountain bike type handlebar that goes straight across. So that does impede a little bit. I guess if they were straight across more like a mountain bike handlebar, it'd be fine. But let's go ahead and go uh, on this test ride and see how she works. We're going to do some hills and a little bit of off-road and things like that and uh, give her the full test. And then when we're done, I'll give you my final reviews and thoughts. So I started off by testing the different levels through the different gears and everything shifted very smoothly and when I went through the different power levels that went smoothly as well. I will say the motor is a little louder than I expected but not so bad. Uh, everything was smooth and it uh, motored on down the trail very very well. The seat was very comfortable. Once I got it adjusted to the right angle and height I was very impressed with it. It's actually better than my current bike. Uh, very impressed with the seat. of this ride, why don't we take a look at some key features on this Velotrek Nomad.
made it. I'm kind of glad because there's a lot of stickers in there. <laughs> As you see as I'm riding up and down many of these hills, the torque going up the hill was very impressive. It had a constant power band regardless of the level I was in. So long as you kept up your cadence on the bike, it powered right up the hills no problem. Okay, so after that ride, I've got to say, all in all, pretty impressed for the bike. Uh, for its price point and uh, kind of an entry level to the big tire, all-terrain adventure type of bike, um, it performed very, very well. I will say again, the power band stayed consistent through all the different levels, uh, uphill. And uh, as you saw in that little part there, I did go up, I want to say it's off-road, it's through a bunch of thistles and things like that. Uh, went up through there nice and easy, so it was uh, kind of impressive. I want to say for this price point and at the time of the video, here's what the price is. Um, so I don't know what it'll be in the future, but uh, well worth the money, I will say. Does it compare to some of the higher end bikes I've tested and that I use? Um, it's not quite there yet to that level. But if you want a bike that gets you into this category at a very good price, um, this is a good entry to that uh, category. So if any of you have any questions, leave your comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Especially questions about this Velotrick Nomad behind me. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and ring that little bell. Let you know I'm releasing another video. So that's about it on this bike. I'm very impressed with it. Um, you uh, would, all would like to get this bike, go ahead and click this link down below here and I'll leave a QR code here to go to the site to get the uh, this bike, the electric bike. And uh, I think you'll be impressed with it. Thanks for tuning in. Make it a great bucket and stay. Goodbye.